Right, well, good afternoon, everybody. Once again, welcome back to the plot. I know it's been uh, it's been over a week now since I've made a video, but uh, unfortunately, with the missus still being a little bit poorly, I've, uh, I've had to choose my time wisely. I've managed to get up the plot for an hour each evening and do all the basics, all the watering down. Uh, of course, at this time of the year, it's, a, it's a, one of the main priorities getting your watering right. Um, once you let your seedlings dry out, it take a lot of uh, picking up again, but um, as I say, as long as I can get up there in the evening, get the water and down, down, and then do a little bit of potting off. What I have been doing, I've been bringing uh, seedlings down from the plot, down home, and uh, sitting down home in my greenhouse, potting them up and then taking them back up if, uh, if on the next day up the plot. And of course, it's just, uh, as I say in some of my past videos, the greenhouse is a, it's a godsend down here. It's like a little shuttle service for us. I can get up, up, up and about, and there. Uh, Bits and pieces done throughout the day while I'm keeping an eye on the missus and then as I back up the plot of an evening to take the stuff up. But this afternoon it's uh, it's absolutely gorgeous here in the northeast. It's still a bit cool, look at that then. Still got that cold easterly wind blowing, so I'm never in a hurry to start planting anything outside. I might uh, try a few cabbages next week, which will be the end of April, first week in May. Um, I've got some nice cabbage ready and I've got the uh, the sprouts can hang on another week or two. I've got pot leaks to go out, um, and I must try and throw some carrots tonight and some uh, some parsnip tips. Of course, I've I really like to have my parsnips in by the end of March, but uh, with the things unfolding as I have done over the last couple of weeks, it's just been impossible. So no doubt we'll uh, we'll crack on. Uh, well, you know where I am. I'm at, uh, at the back of my house on uh, this sort of a bit of wasteland. Um, absolutely paradise it is around here. It's just the birds, the bees, the trees, and I love it. And of course. I come down here and um, bring me a bag out the back gate and I get me get me regular crop of nettles and uh, of course there are loads of um, comments online about the, about the nettle, nettle juice and of course the nettle tea, well I, I love the uh, I love to make the nettle tea and of course it's a free food, uh, there's always plenty of them. As I say, if you've got a little patch of nettles in the garden, don't uh, don't dig them up. Just just let them grow. And I'm sure the butterflies are much rather land on them than what they would on your cabbages. Um, and of course, all you need is a, a good long sleeve, a pa good pair of gloves, an old chopping bag, and a pair of scissors, and we can uh, we can crack on. And of course, with the, with the nettles just starting to come through now, I'll get like get my first crop, and then we can get up the plot and uh, get this first mixture made up. And see, just a, just a good pair of scissors. An old shop bag is a trick. And I like to just cut them halfway down. And by doing that, you're going to let them grow on again for another crop. I that means you get three crops out of these in a year. Once you've cut them, you like just like topping the plant, it's the same what you do with your chrysanthemum dahlias. Uh, no doubt we'll speak on about that later on because uh, I'm busy potting up some of the, the dahlias in the allotment now they, they, and these are the, uh, the seeded variety just the, the little garden dahlias a couple of comments online, online again about the dahlias such an easy, easy flower to grow and I love growing them there there's, there's so much um, uh, there's so many different varieties there's, there's, I'm sure there's a variety for everybody to grow um, pom poms, uh, reflectors Daisies, they say, there's hundreds of varieties. I'm sure you'll find one that will suit yourself. But they will talk about the dahlias once you get up to the plot, as I say, the ten being are going to work my way through these, and uh, nine times out of ten, they end up getting caught and getting a good stinging. But if you've got yourself a pair of gloves, you just ease your way through them. And of course, long sleeves is a is always the worst. Because no doubt they're always catching on. So in five minutes I've getting quite a few there. It doesn't take much to start your brew off. And where I like to start my brew off if you, if you haven't got room in the greenhouse or the polytunnel, uh, get a watering can or whatever you're going to make it in your pocket, out in the garden, and just make sure it's south facing in the sunshine. Of course, uh, the heat of the sunshine is going to uh, warm your water up in your tank and always have a cover over it and that's going to start the fermentation off because once you get these in the water and start rotting down 
They'll give one hell of a stink out. But that's part and parcel of the garden. Yeah. Put a good uh, good handful there. Couple of lads commented last night there uh, on the Facebook page. There's nettles at the back of them. Well, as I say, it's a fantastic crop. For next week, I can go to the bottom here and start cropping from here and just work my way up all the way around. Sell these bags for once a week. That's my, that's my first bag for. We'll take that out this afternoon. I'll get, the, I'll get one of the barrels out in the greenhouse. The reason I've got my sun hat on for has been absolutely, as I say, the sunshine's been great in the last couple of weeks. And of course, I managed to get my head bonded on Wednesday. But um, we've still got any slew wind blowing off the east coast, and it's, uh, it's absolutely freezing. Uh, but see, when I'm in the shade in the back garden, it's quite nice to have in there. I can spend my time potting up in there and just doing bits and pieces. So that's a good start, anyway. I'm pleased with that. I've got a good, good bag full. We'll take these up a pot and we'll get started making the first brew. I must warn you, though, it does stink. But uh, it's a free foot. It's absolutely fantastic. It's Full of nitrogen and it's great for you. Your brassicas, your leeks, your onions, anything that likes nitrogen. And of course it's a free crop. But uh, I'll show you that when we'll get up the plot. Okay? See you up there soon. Okay, well we've managed to get up here. Tea time now in the northeast. Just turned four o'clock and I've got to see it's still cold outside. But by God, it's warm in these polytunnels. Uh, you can just see we'll put our first row. Or I've got mesh on the door behind us, and that cold wind blowing straight in. I've just taken my jacket off, and already I'm absolutely freezing with it. Um, if you can notice, uh, we'll put the main row of uh, Corfu tomatoes. And the first ones to go in, of course, they're the big ones. They're, uh, they're a lovely big tomato. Now, along the front here, once the Corfu get established, we'll probably put some Mazda Chocker. And uh, I've got some giant orange to go along the front, and then over the back row where the last of the cabbages are. Um, I don't know if you can see them, the last of the spring cabbage. Well, they're absolutely fantastic crop over there this year. Be really brilliant. But um, once we're fair, once we're getting rid of the last of the cabbages there, there's, uh, there's some nice ones down the bottom there, in between the little bag. Absolutely first class. I'm uh, I'm over the moon with them. And there, of course, uh, the cabbage dunking and that that beautiful. But the uh, main priority this afternoon, well, as you know, I've, uh, I've collected the first bag of nettles and uh, I'm getting just about everything ready. And, uh, and of course, what I like to do with my nettles is uh, now this drum here, 45 pound drum, and it's facing west, south, west. So it's getting the sun most of the day. As the sun comes on, it's just in the west, it's getting nice and warm. And that's what you need if you're going to try a nettle juice. Doesn't matter how big your container is, you can just use a, a small bucket if you want. Uh, put a few nettles in the bucket, give it a good swish around, and just put a lid over it or a bag over it. It's to keep the heat in <coughs> and, of course, start the fermentation off. But mind, no excuses when you start the fermentation off. You've got to have a good, strong nose for it because it absolutely stinks. But it's a, it's a fantastic feed. As you see, it's full of nitrogen, uh, and there's, they've just been sweating down for a couple of hours since the uh, since this morning when I picked them. Straight in. What you can do if you want, uh, a couple of comments online about them, is to put them in a net bag. Now I'll show you that when we go to the bottom polytunnel. You can put them in an old onion bag, tie the onion bag, and drop them in. 
and that just saves all the bits and pieces getting in the water. But me, I never bother. I do with a horse manure. Um, I like to put my horse manure in bags. I'll show you that when we'll go through there. It says exactly the same thing. And with the nettles that are in there now, and that water is actually absolutely lovely and warm. So, in with the nettles. Nothing else. Just your nettles. Good stir up and just keep stirring it at least twice a week and have a good container over the top. I just like to use that. It's got holes in the top, lets some air through, but it's keeping all that heat in. We'll come back that next week on next week's video. And uh, if you've got smelly vision, well, you'll be able to smell it wherever you are because it absolutely honks. But it's, it's fantastic stuff. I've used it for years and of course it's free. And if, you, if you can find a little patch in your garden where you've got nettles going, don't dig them up, use them, use them for a free feed and uh, they're absolutely marvellous, for, especially for young cabbage, uh, onions, leeks, anything like that, any brassicas and absolutely fantastic, full of nitrogen. Now what I will be doing this year, I'll be starting to seaweed one off, <laughs> but what I'll be doing with that, I'll be wanting the juice out of it. So I'm then to get a barrel made, <coughs> lift the barrel up, <coughs> God that's got me going already, lift the barrel up, on a bit of a plinth for the small tap one and then load it with seaweed but in, in between layers I'll put some comfrey leaves because comfrey leaves are great if you've got a comfrey plant that's once again fantastic you put it in the water exactly the same as this it'll turn the water black not green like your nettles do it'll turn the water black but that's great for potash for tomatoes strawberries any fruits but what I'm going to do I'm going to mix it I'm going to mix seaweed and comfrey together I'm going to put a weight on it inside the barrel, put the lid on, and hopefully the decompress, pressing down, and it'll just release the juices at the bottom. A nice steady flow of black juice into a container, and then you can water your plants with that. You can mix it for your 50 50 or 30 30, whatever, and then you feed your plants with that. Once again, it's free. If you've got comfrey in your garden, it's a fantastic source of their potash for your tomato plants. But uh, as I say, the nettle juice, well, that's nitrogen. We'll go back to the sprays again next week because um, I'm going to start spraying some of the croissants. Yeah, all the strawberries need a good spray, but I think I'll, I'll not put a garlic spray on them. I've done it the other week. I'm going to, I might have to do um, because we noticed a little bit of white fly um, on the croissants the other day. So what I might do is I might make up a little baking soda one. I've done it a couple of weeks ago um, on one of my last videos, but I'll, uh, I'll make up another one next week. I'll show you how I do it. I'll do the garlic spray. Um, I'll do the now the chamomile tea. I'm finished with now. A few comments again once I, online the other night. Um, I don't use the chamomile right through the year. I use it at the beginning of the year for the just for the seedlings. I give the give the compost a good soaking, and then I, I give them a good soaking once they emerge, once they start poking their heads through the compost. Give them another good soaking of chamomile tea, and that's that to me gives it a lovely um, gives the seeds a really good start. Keeps the air, most of the bugs not away. Um, but apart from that, everything else now, from now on, will be fed organically. Uh, manure, nettles, comfrey, seaweed, anything I can get my hands on. <coughs> and of course, my own compost. A lot empty out the compost bins, being Roger, bit at a time. I'm going to make up about four mixes this week. I might incorporate that in a new video because that's going to fill all my boxes on the benches for putting my peppers in, my chilies and some dwarf tomatoes um, so I might make up a couple of mixes next week on the mix and I'll show you how I do them and then get all the boxes filled up uh, another job I've got to do today is starting the dahlias I'm a little bit behind with the dahlias I've usually got them potted off by now I usually like to leave them till about the second third week in April but well, come at the end of April now so I'm not that far away um, I want to get the dahlias potted off get them done the night and I want to take another couple of trays of marigolds down home. I'll show you my marigolds and I'll show you what they like the way I like to do mine. It's uh, quite an easy method. Some people say it's a bit crazy like but uh, hey, not everything's perfect in the garden, not everything's rosy. Um, I do it my way and I've never had any failures over the last 20 years. Now, a couple of lads commented that they, they didn't get any germination with their, uh, with their marigolds. Well, marigolds is one of the easiest plants to grow, and I, now I save my seed every year. I've got naughty Mariette, I must have had it for about 10 years now, 
I loved the plant when I first grew it, when I packed the seed, and I kept the first seed, and this is a great way of um, saving yourself a few coppers at the back end of the year in the autumn, is to go around, see what plants you like, if you like them, save the seed. Now with dahlias, the bed and dahlias will be exactly the same. Seed head heads up, I'll explain that in the, um, in the greenhouse. You can save the seed off that, if you like the, the flower that comes up, save the seed head, stick it in the envelope, mark it, and then you know what you've got for the following year. Your yeah, marigolds are exactly the same. Just pull off a few heads when they start drying out, get them in the envelope, same for the following year, and a couple of dozen heads and you'll get hundreds, hundreds of seeds. I've had four big trayfuls of marigolds that have started to break up, and I'll show you how I like to plant mine, but that's where we're going now, into the year uh, 100 foot greenhouse, and we'll get some of these dahlias done. Okay? Right, well, here we are. Favourite spot. Starting to get a little bit sorted out. Um, I've already started putting up my me, me large tomatoes here off the front. Two, three, four, five. I've got five hillbilly, and at the back of them, I'm going in between them, I'm going to put some uh, some peppers or chilies. The uh, reason being for the, the hillbillies, as I explained in the last video, I've only got four foot, but I'm quite happy with that. I'll get three solid trusses off them because they're massive tomatoes. I'll just let the three trusses grow and then there'll be plenty of light coming through where I can put a chilli and a pepper at the back of them. But uh, that's, that's all that come. At the moment I'm concentrating on my dahlias. I'll just shift that out of the way. That's one tray I've just done uh, last night. That was my last job before I left. Putting up that tray of dahlia. But I'll, I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, and of course these are bedding dahlias. That's my tree, that's my second tree of bed and dahlia there. I've already started uh, taking some out. And now that's a perfect size for me to, to start potting off. And a lot of people say, far too big then to pot off. Well, if you watched my video last year, and that you'll know. Once again, you just got to know your weeds from your seeds. Pick your way through them. Once you start digging these out, you'll see bits of weed that in amongst them. Of course, it is my own compost. So you're going to expect a few weeds. We'll put that one seed for the moment. Uh, and I'll show you these. Now these are two of the big show dahlias. Now these dahlias here are just the bed ones. You buy them from Wilkie's, any shops. They get 40 seed for uh, for a couple of pounds a packet. Absolute fantastic game. Fantastic value for money. And as I say, you can you can let them grow on. And if you like the flowers, save one. Pull a couple of pods off when they're dry. And you can save the, save the seed yourself. Now there's, uh, as I say, these are the big show dahlias. Now I've had a couple of these just sitting on the benches, once again just pulling the weeds out, and they're, they're absolutely fantastic. Now on that one alone, there's six on there, and there's, a, there's about eight, nine, ten on there, and take cuttings off that. Now I think I'll leave them for another day or two, because uh, at the moment they're looking nice and healthy. Uh, of course, once again, they're sitting in my own compost. Now a lot of people will not bother with dahlias like that, because they're too big, and they haven't got the storage to put them. Well, that's an easy way. Put them on there for the time being. An easy way out of that is to grow hot tubers. And these are two of the cuttings that I took last summer from the plants. You can root them off into pots and just leave them in the pots. And what I showed you is at the beginning of the year, the little tiny, the little tiny tubers that I had. Just pull them bits of leaf from away. They're looking a little bit dry at the moment. I'm going to give them a good soaking. But there, uh, once again, there's three good shoots on there. I could take two of them off and leave that little one on. And on that one, there's four lovely shoots. I could take three of them off for cuttings and leave one on. Now, absolutely marvellous. The first class, just a small little size now. They can be planted out in the garden in a couple of weeks' time. I'm saying a couple of weeks, depends on what part of the country you're on. We don't normally put dahlias out the third week in May, sometimes up until June. So there's plenty of time for these. I'll pot these up the day, and what will happen, they'll go and sit in the, in the cold polytunnel down the bottom end there, and they'll, they'll hard enough there for at least another fortnight, so it's going to take me into the second week in May, and then they'll go out on the back benches where I've been putting a lot of the, um, the spring bed, a lot of the summer bedding. They'll go out and sit in the back benches for another fortnight, so that's to the end of May, which will be perfect, it'll be spot on. But uh, for the time being, I'll shove them to one side 
I'll just give you an idea of what these dahlias are like. Now what we'll be doing with these, that's it when the trefoils are done, what we'll be doing with these, we'll leave them to settle down first. I know you might think they're a little bit long. We'll leave them to settle down for a week or two and then we'll top them. We'll top them is exactly the same with the croissants. Nipping the buds out, nipping the main axle out, and so the, the bottom branches will start spreading out and giving you some nice bushy plants for planting out in May. In, in May. So if we'll just finish that tree full off. And all I like to do is be little seven centimeter pots. These are fine for them. I'll just show you these and I can get onto the and I can get onto the um, the marigolds and marigolds are exactly the same. Now as I say what I like to do with mine I can take that out and just lift it out and there's a full that's a root ball. <laughs> it's absolutely chopper. I like the wait until the tree wait until the tree is exactly full to the top. I'll just pop them back in there because all I'm going to do I'm going to break away a couple of these corner ones just to show you how easy it is. Put them on one side. I just just break away a few of the smaller ones. And there we have it. They've they were planted in March. And they are absolutely stocking little plants. First class for your little pots. Put them in there. A little bit of compost on the side. A good watering. And they go and sit in the bottom polytunnel for a fortnight. And they'll be absolutely spot on a fortnight's time. And they'll go up in the back beds. I'll do exactly the same with them. Once I'm getting a good hole, once another well rooted, we'll go along. Here's a good example there. The main bud there, the main axle, we'll just nip that out and then it'll send side shoots from the axles to exactly the same with the croissants. All it is, stopping the plant, side shoots grow out, or the croissants you can choose what you want. I like to flower mine two up and that's two flower heads. With daily heads you just let them grow. Once you've nipped them out, let them grow and they'll bush out and you get a first class plant out of them. It's such an easy um, such an easy job to do. You know me, I keep going on about uh, people like to start potting off when the, when the, when the plants are only in the sealing stage, tiny. I never like to do that. I, oh, even with my tomatoes, I like to, like to have them with a really good root ball on them before they say they start shifting them. And daily as is no different. And there's a first class plant, just pot it up. No slaver. Nice and early. As I say, you'll get a little bit of weed growing in amongst it. A bit of chipweed there. Once you know your, your weeds from your seeds, it's an easy enough job. Yeah, there are two first class ones. It's such an easy job to do, and it's so rare. Uh, I let you come up in the evening, and I can spend a half an hour just pottering on, and then within within a half an hour, I've got a full tree of uh, the dahlia plants potted out. And as I say, they're such a rewarding plant, these here. But they are. They're unforgiving for cold. They do not like frost. Um, they like most of the plants. They like your, your fuchsias, your begonias. They do not like the cold. So, as I say, just bear with us. <coughs> once these are ready to go out, and once I think they're well hardened off, and I think the temperatures are right, and only then will I let them go out. Put another pot. I'll find another one. And that's a half a dozen done in a matter of ten minutes. First class little plants. Let you see, I don't like um, I don't like putting off too early. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. All they need now is a damn good watering in there. They're on their way. <coughs> we'll put them all up into a tray. You know, for the time being. Now my me, uh, me marigolds I do it exactly the same way. I've got a half a tray somewhere. That's a, that's a half a tray done. My marigolds now do it exactly the same as what I do with the dahlias. 
Uh, no difference, only difference from of these is when I take them out of the trays. Oh, there's my, there's my marigolds there. Now people are saying they're struggling to get seeds to come through. And you see all the grass growing through there. Bits of chickweed and everything because it's my own mix. It's my own pot mix. So you're going to get a bit of weed, but once you know your weed from your seed, I keep saying it all the time, but. It's um, when you're first starting up and you don't know the difference, it's an easy mistake to make. So, all I had to do with that, throw it out. Full tray, out. And there we have it. Absolutely fantastic, marvellous. I love this time of year when I'm doing this. Get that down there, you can be as rough as you want. They like to take it. And then you can. Of course you can get your little punches like that and you can work your way through it and you see any weeds in amongst them just pull the weeds out and then all I have to do is to break little punches off of twos, threes, fours like that you've got absolutely hundreds in there absolutely hundreds of seed and that's only for half a dozen <coughs> a couple of dozen um, seed heads that I saved last year and this is uh, the Naughty Marriott <clears throat> Once again, black pots, half filled, that's all, half filled with my own compost, and then just take a little group, say, uh, there's four or five in a group there, but absolutely thousands when you save your own, put them up in that pot, just no it. First class. Get them a good soaking. They go in them trays. They got the same. Finish your trays off and then we'll take the nice little group like that. We'll take the tray into the bottom polytunnel. Such an easy job. And of course, with a marigold, that easy to grow. Within a fortnight, I'll be able to take them out of the tunnel and put them on the back benches over there for the final hardening off and they'll be ready second, third week in May. Just perfect. They're actually sitting there for a month without any problems. But the, you know, you can use smaller pots if you want. It's up to yourself. I've got these trays with the pots in. Um, same as these trays here with the dealers. I think they're fantastic. I've got about ten more of these to do. And that's it. The marigolds and the rest of the dealers. But they're uh, absolutely fantastic just for slipping on the back bench and then give them all a good watering. But uh, as I say, with these, we'll, we'll let them get a good a root system on them first and then we'll go on and we'll pinch them all out. It's just a matter of nipping the tops out. I'll do, this day, I'll do the chrysanthemums next week. I've got a lot of chrysanthemums to plant out, some of the earliest, so I'll put some in pots. I'll plant out some in the garden and what we'll do, we'll stop them. Middle of April is fine for most cultivars, most early varieties. But I'm going to grow some inside, the ones I've left in the pots, mind the monsters, nice and thick stems, so I'm going to stop them next week, but I'll do that on the video. But there, uh, as I say, where the marigolds are concerned, you can just rip them off, and they are all the grass on there, you see, bits of grass, bits of grimsel grown, pull them out, you can go right through the bunches, just pull the grass out, absolutely first class. And as you split them open, oh, it's a little bit on a dry side, but if you leave it a little bit on a dry side before you open these up, you'll find that the split open a lot easier, and if it, a lot easier than if they would when they were soaking wet. So just let the day before you're going to do it, just let them go a little bit dry, and there you can just divide that up. You can get your hands in there, pull lovely little bunches like that off, threes, fours, whatever you want. Lovely little bunches like that. Such an easy job to do. Bit of grass there, get that out. And they make a first class plant. Really nice and strong. I do not bother when I'm putting marigolds up, putting them up singly in the little, little cells and little. No way. This is where I've done my marigolds for donkey's years, donkey's years. And I get a first class plant every year. 
even if you're buying a packet of seed, you'll get a couple of hundred seed in the packet. So, out of a couple of hundred seed, you'll, you know, you'll get at least a, a hundred plants. Um, and I'm quite sure not everybody uses a hundred plants in a garden. But if you do need any more, by all means, save your own seed. And the best way to do it is grow them in bulk like that in a tray. And then just pull them off into little bunches and you get a, you get a first class plant. So I'm happy enough in here. I'll give you a little show around, a little tour of the um, of the rest of the tunnel, and show you how the rest of the plants are coming on. Right, a little, little walk around. Now this is the that's the daily as I showed you before. Now that's another tree of marigold, and you see the weeds in there. Dobbins grown, grass grown, grimsel grown. But you do exactly the same. I'll take these two trifles out home, and I'll get these done tomorrow morning. In the home while the um, while the wife's at the doctor's, so I can get, I can, as I say, I can throw them in the barrow now, take them down home. Now on the top there, the zinnias have been really slow coming this year. Uh, I've got two trays of them, but um, I'm just letting them grow. Full tray of uh, celery coming away quite well. Now these these are the um, the pot marigold. Now these will go absolutely fantastic. I'll put these off in the in the decent sized pots, and. Uh, a calendula, and of course, these are going amongst the tunnels, and they're great for bringing down the hawfly fly uh, for your pollinators. Absolutely fantastic. Nice little bit of colour there with the last year's geraniums, doing really nice. Onions, onions belting away. Well pleased with them. These are used for going in the garden. Uh, and they make a nice, I've got a tree of seedlings over here. And of course, that's my me, um, me Swan River daisy for the baskets. See, I'm never in a hurry to get anything potted off. I'll get about day. Uh, I'll get a full tray of black pots with them in next week. Yeah, they're just a nice size for potting up. So I'll get them done once I've finished all the the marigolds and the pot pot marigolds. Sweet corn, well on its way through there, romping through. I'll get a good soak last night. I'll just I've just sowed in the two packets. Cracking roots on them. Um, there's about 50% uh, come through there, the sweet corn. I'm uh, a bit disappointed with that, and that's a Swift, that's an F1 variety. But I've got two packets of Incredible down home, I've just sown them today, so I'm hoping they're going to grow a lot, a lot better than them. Oh, Roger, just start banging up here. Now, these are, the, um, these are the Winston potatoes. I was a bit disappointed with these, because they didn't seem to be grown as well, but I think it's down to the beds being that dry. Um, and I think they haven't had enough, as, as much water as what um, as what the other ones have. But uh, no doubt they're growing. The strawberries are romping away fine. But uh, and up, up here, well, it's just chocolate in here. And of course, these are the, a big colossus of strawberries. I must get a bit of water on these tonight, that's one job. Some fantastic fruits in them. Lovely big strawberries. And of course, once again, they want feeding now when they've got their fruits on. I'm going to give them a little bit of a spray because I noticed a little bit of white flying on the, on the other day. But uh, they're going to make us out to be a lie now because they're looking nice and clean. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll give them a spray just to be on the safe side. Um, as I say, I might, I might use a baking soda. There's the flowers dropping off so it tells me they've been pollinated. And of course they've all got small fruits on. Absolutely marvellous. I must get them out. They're, they're ready to go out in the garden. I'll get them out in this on the back bench and harden them off for a little bit. They're new delphiniums. <coughs> Loads of croissant cuttings up there. Any amount of uh, summer bedding to grow, these have all got to be hardened off. And these are the Seychelles Cosmos, absolutely marvellous. Sweet pea, more delphiniums. Uh, pot leeks, pot leeks are growing great. Pot leeks can sit in here for another four weeks at least. Because uh, we don't need them till the end of May. So, by the come the end of May, they're going to be lovely and strong, pencil thick, and about 18 inches to 2 foot high. Easy. I'm going to have to start giving them a little bit of feed at the moment. Uh, two of my pots are at the back there. I put my pots in round pots. Uh, my ceilings in round pots, so I know which is mine. And the rest of them just go to family and friends. Uh, these pot leaks will probably get put out on the back bench this week. Create some more room in here for the rest of the plants coming in. Carnations, sunflowers, and of course the old uh, croissants. Some of them I've managed to get potted up and are well rooted right at the bottom there.
So I'll have to get cracking on them this week. I'll have to start getting some. Uh, I've already put a basket full outside there. Um, as you can see, they're gonna uh, they're gonna be the first ones planted out. So I'll get a couple of rows pro out this week sometime. What I what I really want to do is to get started on these uh, carrots and parsnips and beetroot. I haven't gotten a, a single seed in yet, but um, I'll have to crack on and uh, find a bit of time to get that done. Yeah, so uh, we'll pop the poly in there. Yeah, the poly. Right, well, here we are. Oh, and the uh, the peach tree has been absolutely marvellous. It's bumping away. And of course, there's some lovely, lovely little peaches on there. If we can just make them out there. Absolutely fantastic. But I'm going to wait until June. We'll wait till the natural drop, the June drop. And then I'll get uh, I'll get sorted out. What I have been doing is sorting out the melon house. On these benches here, they'll have boxes on. And these will be full of chilies within the next week or two. At the moment, I've still got a tough space, of course. A tough space is always the best space for the tomatoes. And of course, I've got some uh, some lovely chilies up here. Three or four different varieties. You know, they'll be ready in about a week's time. So we'll start planting some of the bigger. Here's a Craig money maker. <coughs> Three or four varieties. I've got some nice uh, shooting star. Courgettes, they can go out soon. Uh, climbing cucumbers, they can go out. Chilies and peppers, absolutely hordes of them. All different varieties. Red Thai chili, red bell chili, Joe Long chili, um, yellow bell pepper. I think these were off uh, John Murphy here. Yeah. But they're uh, grown away really well, well pleased with them. Tomatoes on the top again, first class. They'd be the next ones planted out in the bottom polytunks. They're ready for now, they've filled the pots up. <coughs> these potatoes in here, these are the jazzy. And these are just romped away. And what Roger's been doing, he's uh, he's been taking the um, the geraniums out of the uh, the multi cell trays. I did manage to get a mix made up last night when I was up here. We've got all the geraniums out of there, and of course they're now in six six pot containers. And they can sit in there now until uh, for another month. <coughs> Growing really well then. I've just threw six of me. Blanche leaves over to the back there, uh, out the road there. <coughs> Nothing of them will be getting used this year, so they'll probably just go for stock plants. They'll go for stock plants and they'll, uh, they'll go and sit in the garden. We'll, we'll have some nice leek stews out of them, no doubt, at the end of the, end of the year. Some nice leeks amongst them, but uh, no doubt. Lots of, lots of bedding. Um, oh, let's use ones. Sylvester's, yeah, they're, they're nice. They're, they're quite a big plant now. Um, grow about four foot tall, but they've got some beautiful flowers, and the smell is absolutely amazing. But uh, still stacks to do. Grape vines romping away really well. I showed you that the other week, and you can see they've got lovely little bunches of grapes on them. Um, now I'm going to start thinning these down. I think I, what I'll do is next week I'll start the video off in here, and I'll uh, I'll get started on these grape vines because there's quite a few people been asking. Of, uh, how to take what what steps to take next? Now oh, this vein was only planted last year. It's only a year old from from its cutting stage. It's only a year old. Um, I've got some of the other vines in there that I took at the back end of last year. I'll just show you them now. But what I'll do is um, next week, I think, I'll, on next week's video, I'll start with the. Um, and of course, there's the new vines there. These are the ones I took last year, and you can see that they're budding away quite nice. That one hasn't quite set any buds on yet, but them two have. I'm well pleased with that. <coughs> these are my own grape. And there should be some black ones somewhere. <coughs> yeah, there's a black one there. No, it's absolutely got some absolutely cracking buds on there. And the top there. That's got a nice bud on there, and that's got a nice bud in the middle. So all of them are coming away. Them three there couldn't be great. I'm, I'm well chuffed for that. That's them done. That's them done. And I think that one over there is another yellow. Yeah, it is another yellow. But right there, it's got a, it's got a growth from the bottom, so I can just cut that there where that bud is. So I can chop that off there, and that'll be a, that'll be a nice little plant. And that one there, as I see, I think it'll leave two or three buds on the top, and two at least two buds underneath. 
<coughs> that way you're sure of getting a good rooting system on the bottom and then you've got a chance of any of these buds of uh, breaking out and giving you a first class plant but yeah, they're, more, uh, they're marvellous nearly forgot about them, begonias have been sitting here for ages and they're just starting to come to life here now I bought these from, uh, from one of the companies and uh, I'm not very happy with them I've been a bit disappointed really very slow in coming but uh, no doubt we'll get, a, we'll get a few come but yeah that's what we'll do next week we'll start that um, we'll start off with the uh, with the grapevine and then we can uh, move on from there but uh, I've still got a lot of work to do tonight I've got uh, fuchsias in that pot there's a full tray of fuchsia over there I need potting up I might crack on with them the geraniums I can shift them into the bottom polytunnel where they're nice and warm <coughs> or I should say nice and cool and then maybe it's next week we might even have a goat lifting one of these potatoes we're not too far away I think we're about we're a couple of weeks earlier than what we were last year normally we lift them at the back end of May but we've got another four weeks yet um, so we might just uh, pull away some of the soil and have a look and see what's underneath if they're a decent enough potato, I can clear this first patch here and then I can start planting it out because so, um, what I mean to do this year is to lift the net uh, lift the polythene from the net so it's wide open right way along the bottom and then I'll plant my sweet corn in here I'll get some uh, some nice chilies and peppers and I'm going to plant some chrysanthemum into here so at least they've got a bit of cover but they've got plenty of fresh air uh, we call it a skirt, that's right way along the bottom there <coughs> we'll lift that up and it's just a net left just to bring the fresh air in <coughs> well, that'll, be, um, that'll be a job for a couple of weeks time normally about the middle of May we do that well, as you can see what beds up there absolutely chock with spring bed um, the Lobelia busy lizzies, all done but just been potting these up every day he comes up he pots these up and at the sixes be there. We've got a couple of full trayfuls of of corn flour there. That's the um, the ones, as they say, the annuals. That's what the way we like to grow us. Well, they, they had been out for two weeks now, and they're spot on. They're full of roots, so they can be planted out now. We we'll start getting get rid of some of them next week. These are all just some of the um, the bina, the bascom. These I left off last year. They're a bit dry. I'll take a bit of water on them. I've got some nice lavender plants here. I've got to take a couple of them down home for myself. Um, that's a trailing ivy. They'll be for the baskets. they will come in handy in a couple of weeks' time when I start doing the baskets up. And of course, there we have it. There's our rare. There's our baskets. Absolutely first class. Over the moon with them. I get a little bit of a little bit of a colouring, and that tells me it's been a wee bit cold. But they're okay. They're under cover here. Could help anybody that's planting them out if they haven't got any cover because it's going to be cold again tonight. I've got a load of lilies there, and um, the lilies will need to go out soon. That's another job. The, the, the work's just piling up and piling up and piling up, and this is a lot of me summer stock. Um, hostas, Zantadesha, Autumn lilies, lilies, Iris, and of course, these are me show leaves for next year <coughs> and a bone dry. I'm going to leave them till tomorrow because I'll focus for some rain tomorrow so I'm just going to leave them out here and hopefully they'll get a they'll get a good um, hopefully they'll get a good water and I'm hoping for some seed heads off there. I might take them back inside because uh, I want to get an early seed head off them but they're looking quite good for the time being. I'm pleased with them. A little bit of rust on them that's what you've got to watch out for. <coughs> Pull these lower flags off so they're nice and clean. I'll give them a <coughs> give them a colic spray and all nice and clean for the time being and then we can get them back get them back inside I think and uh, once I get a bit of room on it I'll just stake them up and hopefully we should get some nice uh, some nice seed heads off them. Well that's it for the time being. I'm uh, as you can see I've got a full barrel load of compost there. I've got to get cracking and making some mixes up. All these bins are now absolutely chocker. Pull it up. That's for uh, this is our compost for next year. And of course, uh, our, uh, our new foundations for the the second greenhouse has come to a halt. 
I'd done this about four weeks ago, but unfortunately, I'm getting nothing else done. Um, pathways need levelling out, and the framework needs adjusting, settling down, and then we can shift that far greenhouse that's on top of the rhubarb bed. I don't know if we'll be able to get it up because the rhubarbs grow right around it now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, everything's looking good. Roger's been there uh, as well as doing putting up, he's been getting the beds ready. Now that bottom bed there is where I'm going to start. Um, this week it's got the uh, Japanese onions in so what I want to do I want to get a couple of rows of carrots in between them and then I want to get a couple of rows of parsnips in the bottom bed before I do anything else and uh, get them out uh, the Jap onions at the far end where the uh, where the hoops are we're going to put some nets over them uh, we've got Jap onions in them we've got peas early peas at the back I saw that saw them last year at the end of last year and they've, they've grown really well real peas with but we're getting there Slowly but surely, the raspberries are all romping away there. What they need is a bit of a bit of water. I was actually going to water them this weekend until I seen the forecast, and we're, we're forecast for some nice rain. So I'm just going to leave them <coughs> and see how much rainfall we'll get tomorrow. And then hopefully we'll, uh, I'll not have to get the hose out and start watering them. But yeah, as you can see, we're really busy here. Yeah, we've been uh, trying to keep ahead, which is we can. Uh, these strawberries down here, and the, I think these are the, um, the Senga, yeah. And these have never been touched, they've been outside here yeah, all winter, and of course there's some lovely growth coming on them now. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to give them a good clean up, uh, give them a spray and give them a good clean up, and I'm going to give them a light feeding. Not a heavy, not too much, just a little bit of, um, just a little bit of nitrogen, just to help that first growth come on because there's no flowers on them yet so you don't want to be putting feed on especially potash if you haven't got any fruit or flowers so I'll leave them for the time being and then we can get started back on one more bins again we're nearly we're nearly empty I think we've got two left down here so that one's empty so it's done really well this year <laughs> Can't get, can't get a top of that one. Oh, there we go. And there we are. Uh, first class, black. Oh, that's lovely, that. Black gold, and that's our compost. That's that's going, apart from all the other rubbish I get thrown out, that is what goes in our, in our compost. It's absolutely fantastic. Now, that's just over a year old, that. As I say, don't be afraid to put any soil in. When you're uh, when you're filling your compost bins, always take a good bit of soil with your uh, with your roots, and uh, it takes a bit of um, bacteria in the compost bin and helps it uh, helps it rot down. There we are, back in the back in the tunnel again, where it's a little bit warmer. So I think I'm just going to knock off now. I think I've showed you right round what 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 we've been doing. There's uh, quite a few new subscribers come online. I'm over the moon with that. Um, well, I think we're up there uh, about there uh, 1,100, which is uh, which is marvellous. I'm glad you're getting something from it, from the from the plot, from me and Roger. What uh, what we like to do, uh, and just keep subscribing. We'll be over the moon. If you cannot uh, wait for the videos, I know I was promising to get one done every week this year, but uh, as things go at the moment, it's just a nightmare. Um, I never know day by day what uh, what we've got planned or what we're trying to do. But, you know, we'll just keep plodding on. And I thought, the day I'll get up, I'll get a video made, show you what's happening and what we're doing, and just try and take it step by step. As I say, the next big thing will be these grapevines. I'll start the I'll start the video off with the grapevines next week, and I'll uh, I'll save some of the tomatoes for planting. Um, in, the, uh, in the second crop of tomatoes, I'll do a video on planting them, because um, I took a chance planting them out. Normally I don't plant out until the second week in May, but uh, they, they grew that well, the um, the, the Corfu tomatoes is absolutely fantastic, they grew that well I thought, I kind of uh, sacrificed into that big pot, I've got a lot of my big pots taken up with the leeks and onions, other plants, and uh, I thought well, rather than put them in buckets, I'll, I'll put them in the bottom polytunnel and just chance them, and they're growing away pretty well, um, I'm happy with them. But as long as you don't get any real cold nights, it should be okay. It should be um, starting to harden itself up. <coughs> and uh, 
it'll be fine. But apart from that, um, I've got some as a chopper on the top there. That's a big giant Russian ones, the, the yellow, and big giant orange. I'm going to plant them in the front, and I'll do that next week. But apart from that, we're over the moon. We're ticking along. We're tick we're ticking along. We're about two or three weeks behind compared to what we were last year, as for seed planting wise. But um, I'm hoping to get there and maybe just get a couple of packets of uh, a couple of rows of carrots sown tonight and tomorrow before that day, before that rain comes more afternoon. It's well overdue because it's bone dry up here in the northeast. Um and we really really if we can get it overnight it'd be ideal. Just a nice steady rainfall. But uh, as you know, it never really works out like that. We'll uh, get a deluge or we'll get a, a splatter on the rain and then it'll it'll come out sunny again. But uh, no bother, whatever we'll get, it'll be welcome. But for now, I'm going to knock off. This is here once again. Uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. Glad you're getting something from the plot. <coughs> if you can't wait for the video, get over on my Facebook page. It's uh, Jeff Foreman on the plot. Send me a friend's request, and we'll, uh, we'll get you on the plot. And we're, we're on there most nights. Um, I've been a bit messy, hitty messy the last few, uh, the last few weeks. As I say, I've had I've had my hands full with the missus, and uh, of course with the lockdown, we've been having to uh, choose what times and how we get up the garden, uh, social distance and all that. But um, yeah, we'll get through it. Just the uh, main thing: stay safe, stay home, stay safe. That's what I keep saying, and that's what we do. Roger comes up in the morning, I come up in the afternoon. We'll get a little bit done, and we'll go back home. Thankfully, I've got my little garden down home. And it is, it's an absolute great to have because it's a little shuttle service. I can take plants away with me now, take them down the barra and bring them back up, all potted up, ready to go in the polytunnels tomorrow. But there, uh, that's something else. Okay, so I'm going to knock off, I'm going to get myself way back down home, do a little bit more potting off down there, and I hope to see you all again in a week's time. Hopefully, in a week's time. If not, it'll be just over a week into a fortnight. But there, uh, I'm sure we'll have plenty doing a plot to show you how we're getting on. Okay, so thanks for your time. Uh, keep watching, keep sharing, and keep subscribing. Okay, I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.